John, John Harding. Yes, yes. Pest. He did, he did. How are you doing? <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Start briefly with the boxing. Congratulations yeah. on your win the other week. How Thank did you, you uh, how did you feel? Uh, I felt, for the first time, I felt uh, uh, relaxed. I felt, um, I didn't feel nervous. Um, uh, you know, it's a lot of pressure in the camp you're in to deliver, if you know what I mean. Uh, you want boxing around, they're KOing. And it's all about, um, I just went in there relaxed and just thought, I'm just going to enjoy it. And that's what I felt to do. I just, just felt to just enjoy what I do. And um, just treated it like a, a sparring session. That's, that's, that's what I mean, it, it certainly showed in your in your performance. You looked uh, it looked more relaxed and you looked, yeah. showed the, the, the silky skills of course, that you've yeah. shown, you have shown in the past, but you showed them consistently the whole way through the fight. Yeah, and, and that's what it was about. Uh, what, okay, my main aim was I, want, I just wanted to go through the rounds relaxed and just do it how I want to do it and yeah and that was I've got a question about the fight which I'll come to full circle at yeah, the end yeah. but um I promised you I was going to give you a bit of a harder yes, time yes, today yes. but <laughs> <coughs> sorry uh but it's nothing to worry about now we did an interview before your last fight and I asked you in, in advance beforehand about one question in particular think, and that, yeah, that yeah, being yeah. um the the birth that you did yeah um the prison time now I know in a way that you're, and stick with me here, that you're kind of proud of that. Not in yeah. like in an earning your stripes hood man's done time kind of way. In a kind of um, I like in, that in man's it, done time. Man's done time from <laughs> Persia, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, in the in the kind of in the in the in the way of the person it's you've become. Yeah. You see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, in, in yeah, where yeah. you are now, like mm. it's like a, you know, it's a it's a scar, but it's a, it's a scar that's yeah, definitely. It's, it's, definitely. Uh, made you who you are uh, and I wanted to start with that journey like because looking at some of your music which is all I've got to yeah, go yeah, on yeah, of yeah, you yeah. before prison yeah let's just say that it presents a different person to the man that I've met okay. a few times yeah. since yeah 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 um, um, and what did the change come in prison or was it ha, basically what I'm getting at is how did you get to being the person you are today? Was it going to prison? Was it before prison? Was it coming out at the end? It, was, what, it's, what? it's weird, it's, it's everything. It's, it's all the journey. It's everything you're going through. Um, like I said, even before prison, like, like there's parts when I said, when, it's like, when I said I wanted out, not in terms of out, it's like, I started having that belief, oh, I could be someone, but I've got to go through what I'm going through. If you know what I mean, I can't just wave a white flag and say, listen, I'm out of this game, I want to get along. If there's people out there that they want to do you harm because it gives them uh, a trophy. You know what I mean? Like a badge because you're a name. So um, it was it was all part of the journey. It's all part of what building, you know, like when I first came into the music game, it was just like, um, I came in like, you know what, I just want the top spot. It was almost like boxing, like I want a top spot, I just want it. Um, I just fueled my aggression into my music, and um, it's funny you say that because yeah. that was what came out of the music. Was yeah, the, yeah. Was the aggressive, like and look, look, yeah. you know, rap, rap, grime, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's got an aggressive. There yeah, is that edge. Yeah. It's much like boxing. It's a very singular mm. me against the world. So you're it, on your it own. It was like I used to release it through my music as well. Um, it was just that like that feeling of just if I was. Um, obviously, you know, your emotions like the weather, it's never the same every day, sunny. When I get that emotion, I write it down. Even today, you know, even up to now, I can have aggression. <clears throat> I just write it down or hit the punch back. Um, and I used to just release it through my music. It's only um, as I've gotten a bit older, I've got conscious. And when I'm in my conscious state, I release that music or a party vibe, I release that music. But. Um, Part of the journey was just like I was growing, you mm. know. I was updating, like you know, you got iPhone five, you need a six, you need a seven. I was updating myself, and um, I felt like the final pin drop was just in prison, watching the Olympics, you know, knowing that I've been around through these few heads that's there, and um, you know, and just missing everything and then knowing that I've got a second chance on what to do. Um, it's, it's not like it was the fight, it's like life hit me where it's like, 
I'm watching the, the world go round. I'm hearing the world go round, but I can't be involved in it. No. So the loss of freedom did happen. Yeah, time. yeah, the loss of freedom, and you've realised the beauty of it. I realised I, I started being more grateful. Um, um, along the line, there were so many temptations as well, because I'm coming out and I'm, I don't have the money to do things that I want to do. Mm. Um, I, I want to train, I want to stick to training, but damn, I've got to find some money to, to feed. I've got a child and then I'm getting hounded that I'm, you know, um, I'm not supporting enough. And in my head, I know oh, I've got this dream and it, when that dream happens, I'll be able to support it. So it was so much battle. They weren't, even when I came out, there was a different battle. There's a battle mm. like, okay, I've stepped out of prison and um, I'm coming around people and there's like people saying don't trust him, stay away from because some people have a different uh, judgment of prison, how it is or the see how the movies are. So it was so there were so many battles. There was even was a time I almost break down when I came out. And it was just like uh, you know, people um that were kinda like family, um, that yeah, they didn't trust me, stayed away, telling people stay away from him, he's this, he's that. People holding on to arguments I had. Um, you know, I was in for three and a half years, so three and a half years prior to that, people hold on to arguments. From back then? Yeah, but um, one of the pinnacle things that happened to me was the um, death of my mother. So when my mum did die in there, and I lost her, I had, a, I had like a day release, and I saw her. So that she, she passed away uh, while you were inside? And then when I was inside, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was like one of the most painfulest things. And that really snapped, I think that was a vital thing in me, because I realised you've got to forgive. You've got to forget because life is short. So mm. it, it hit to me like, whoever's I've argued with, had a problem with, I'm starting again. How you doing? You're right. How you doing? Love you. Love you. Because I started thinking, if I had an argument with you and you died tomorrow, how would it make me feel? And that was, that was a, a lesson that made me upgrade myself in life as well. So... Um, I carried a different, uh, just, just a different response. I, you know, I'll argue with someone if I did, but within, you know, an hour or something, I'm back to normal. I've forgotten about it, and uh, it helped me. I think that's one of my pro things that's helped me really progress as well. Just the ability to just um, forgive a lot quicker. In Belmarsh, I was a listener, so say someone wants to commit suicide, they'll hit the bell, ask them to talk to a listener. I sit and I talk to them, open questions, just try and tell them. Then, no, I don't tell them don't. Okay, don't harm yourself. I kind of unearth why, and mm -hmm. you know what is it? Ask open questions, and they might let me know about their youth story, and they feel relieved, and that and that kind of helped me a lot. That I was helping people. So along that lines, um, I started getting a lot of favour, and um, um, I've got the best jobs in prison in terms of I was the head of the gym, working on the food plate, serving all the food. And those things helped me, um, everyone's aiming towards an open prison, which is category D. And um, I got, uh, after two years, they gave that to me. I moved to Brixton. And that means category D, I'm entitled to uh, come out of prison for maybe a day and come back. And that was when you saw your mum? Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's when I, I, I saw her. And um, also, um, when we was there, it's obliged that you, you work from the prison. Mm. In order for you to get a day release, you must go to work from the prison, but it's your time. So it's like, <laughs> you, you have to leave at a certain time, there's a bit in stock or like a library. So I walk from Ritson, I have to walk to that library, but after that I've got to be back. You know what I mean? So there's no like left or right, you've got to be back. And sometimes they'll send like a secret shopper kind of thing. That <laughs> right. I've been sitting there and I'm thinking, I swear I know that face. <coughs> And he walks in, hey, John Harden, how you doing? Oh, yeah, just checking on you, yeah, you know, that you're here. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to run away, would be dumb. Okay, yeah, I'll be all right, cool. And he go about his business. And so that kind of made me taste a bit of freedom, but it, it kind of, it was almost like a dog in a leash. And there's yeah. the meat. You're free for a bit, but you've got to come back. You got you, you get to look, but you've got to come back. Almost like you can earn this freedom. Yeah, this yeah, what you're yeah. you're earning kind of thing. And the thing is, uh, the, the most painful thing is because you're just on best behaviour. You have not in the terms of best behaviour. It's just uh, you know officers talking to you in a certain way, and you can't respond because now your freedom, the little bit of freedom's on the line. Mm. They could just write something about you, and shoot, you know what I mean. So that little day release that I can quickly see my uh, daughter for a bit and spend some time, just eat some food, and come straight back. 
and then maybe wait 28 days for another one um, it was worth it and I, I remember one of the most painful days was the it was the day of my mum's funeral and um, I got in some uh, misopen I think they done a check at me and I left like a couple minutes earlier so they tried to ref like, take away my open prison so I, was, I weren't allowed out for like like three months, I was just not allowed to work on nothing, and then that's when it hit me. My mum, my mum died. They come, come see me, and told me it's heartbroken, and then um, they had a meeting to let me back out, and they were, they were harsh. It was like it's like they even asked that the, the governor's like, I don't care whatever happens outside, abide by that book, blah blah blah. That's very short. Um, they've written to me on the on a signed document I can go out but on the system it said no it didn't say nothing so when I'm saying like you know I've gone to the, the place where oh, it's time for me to go the cows is harsh now you're not going nowhere I don't care you're not going nowhere and then it's like it just broke me I remember it was just like they're just controlling me uh, did it was, teach you a humility do you think did. or did you just I wanted at that time I wanted to, to really outburst but I couldn't yeah and then luckily there was an officer that I, you know, gym officer that walked past and he went and got a governor from that was on duty that I've never seen before that overread everything and apologised and, and let me out. But it did teach me a humility because I was so painful but then I thought, you know what, I'm in the right. At the time I didn't think but I was just sitting down and tears just coming out, like the pain, like everything can, like... I'm just thinking, wow, I'm, I'm in prison, I can't go nowhere, my mum's funeral's about to happen, and I can't go. And it was just like, F life, like, it was just, yeah, it must it was, be hard. It was a painful, it was a painful, that, that, that moment, that moment there was very, thinking back of it, yeah, that was a very painful uh, moment. That, that, there's been so many days and times where it's just been like, that hit me, that hit me. That's the click. I'm gonna do this. This is gonna make a better in life. Been... So, there was a lot of vital points in prison that, um, yeah, did uh, really help. But at the end of the day, I got to go out and, and at least pray with my mother and come back. So, you did get to go out? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. Yeah. How's your relationship with your family now? Like, do they all come to your fights? Uh... Um, I've got my, my little sister, you probably always hear her, hit him! <laughs> hit him! That's her, that's my little sister. She's always there, she's always there. I um, had my uh, my brother, uh, uh, that's flown, uh, flown over from Sierra Leone, he was there. And they're my main two family members that are just always there. Um, um, it is, sometimes it's sad, you know, we've, you know you've got so much family differences that... Um, I just believe that everyone just forgive and forget, but sometimes some people don't have that gift or ain't yeah. gone through that in life where they can just forget what's happened, forget an argument, and would prefer to hold it. So, um, um, yeah, there's been a lot of battles, but I just, um, I, whoever's there at the end, it's all about not who's there at the beginning, not in the middle, but the person who's there all the way through, and that's who I count as uh, my family. It's the mentality. You need something that gives you mentality because you automatically feel, how am I going to get a job? Uh, you feel judged. I've gone to probation and, and and even the way a person just judged me, like that number of, oh, you know, if you do this, you go back. If you do, no, tell me something great. That's why when I talk to the kids, I just told them, do you know you could be great? And no one's ever told them that. How can a kid not be told that? How can you look at me like, wow, like, I'm just living proof that I've gone through that. Mm. And just by believing in myself, I'm at a certain stage. Like, you know, from my era, they look at me as if I've made, you know, in the eyes of boxing, I'm still, you know, kind of low. But in the eyes of where we're from, that, that's how things don't as much happen there. Because to them, it's like, wow. You know what I mean? So mm. I'm thinking, if they can just believe in us, the first thing has to start with, is the belief. When I was in prison, I kept believing. That's what kept me going, is that I woke up and believed. I didn't listen to what people said. And they said, don't trust him, you can't make oh, you can't do this, you can't do boxing, you can't go and rap, you can't go and do this. But people tell you what you can't do because they can't do it. So, 
the main thing is something that could believe. Even if this is why, even if it was just my story to say, listen here, here's a guy who went from prison, he done this, that you can do it now. You you can you can, because they think you've got a criminal record. Oh, you, you can't you can't do this. That's that's what it feel, feels like. Mm. So I think the main thing has to start with the belief. Do you I think, think that society has to change to stop judging a little bit as well? Yeah, it, it would or help. Or have you not experienced that it would help. too much? It would help, but there's nothing you can stop doing. Because the first thing when people want to prison, oh, you know, they look at you different. You know what I mean? When I start, I know, when I start open up about it, some people go, oh, I never knew you was in a prison. Or I never knew. Some people just see it as if I was just born a, a good person. <laughs> or, or something <laughs> like, a lot of people mention me, oh, oh, I never knew you. And that's I've just openly said it, even in like in my workplace, they take it to me even more now. Mm. It's just, wow, I think I'm, you know, they they take joy to my personality because why well, now I'm just open. Before I was a bit concealed. I used to feel a way like oh, they might judge me. I wouldn't really say it as much. I think people recognise uh, yeah. and acknowledge the um, how hard you've you've worked double hard. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. to get where you are exactly, because you've exactly. come through that and and mm -hmm. and as you say opening up about it mm -hmm. does get you that extra bit of yeah people I, I think more people some people might be turned off by it, but I think more people would be like wow do, do you know what I mean now you touched on you touched on a couple of things uh, where you're talking about your time in prison there and you sort of the journey that you've been on and mm -hmm. that was music and religion yeah. uh, with music's been sort of Grime music has been quite big news again with Stormzy winning the uh, best male at the uh, at the Brits and then performing quite a politically charged song about Grenfell Tower. Mm. Um, now, obviously, it's great that he was using that platform to talk about something that, quite frankly, needs to be addressed. Uh, do you? But do you think that music, not just not just rap, but do you think that music has a responsibility to be um, responsible, even? Um, I, I, as I think, uh, society we always like to finger point uh, where the problem is coming. We never like to look at and think it's on the individual. Everyone has the power of choice in their life, and that's what we need to remember. And I don't think it's it should be blamed on music at all. Um, uh, just like um, I understand music. Um, obviously, when you're in a certain mood, it it can help. Like when I, you know, when we win, when we ring walking, when we when we in the boxing gym, we don't want to listen to no soft, soft hold the hands, or, you know, heal the world stuff. We want to hear something aggressive and punch the bags. And you know what I mean, like, um, like I said, uh, if I'm if I'm along with a female, I'm I'm gonna play some Mark Kelly. Like, get me in the mood. You know what I mean? So um, I wouldn't suggest that I put the blame. On, on music, I think if someone's got an option to pick up a weapon and go and use it, that's there. Like, there's no way I, someone can stand in court and say, yeah, your honor, it's not my fault, I listened to 50 Cent. So that's why I done that. No, 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 it's on the individual. So um, I don't think, uh, with, like I said, with music, it's an expression. Someone's expressing what they've gone through or expressing their a, a, a scenario and it touches people. Um, just like um, you know, Adele, and I, just, she's gone through a heartbreak, and she wrote that album Twenty One, and it's touching people. It's made her the bestseller, and um, if she didn't go through it, we wouldn't be able to relate to it. So um, I don't think, to the bottom line, we can say finger point music, or they should be obliged, or there should be a contract saying they should have to do it. I don't think there should be no blame on any stars, really. Fair enough. Yeah. I wonder why I thought I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing you mentioned was, and, and these can be quite closely related sometimes because um, music and religion. Mm. Obviously, there's. Uh, I mean, you go to church, you yeah, sing yeah. songs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, you're a religious guy as well. Has that mm. been? Um, you've uh, has given you strength. Religion has given me a lot of strength. Uh, a lot of strength has got me through the hard times. Uh, in life, keeps me going today, keeps me going in the boxing ring. Um, I grew up in religion, uh, we had to, um, yeah, we always had to pray. Mommy, mommy would make us pray in the morning. My friends would be around the house, knock, 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 come down and pray. And we're like, oh man, I'm like, stay at your house, man. 
<laughs> like, oh, John's mum makes us pray. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, that's weird, you know, like us weed smokers at the time are in a room having to be led by prayer by my mum, you know? And um, yeah, even the family after that I, I was living with, um, yeah, you know, six in the morning and we're praying. So, um, and as we always say, a family that prays together stays together. So we believed there was just a core strength in just uh, praying and being thankful of what you already have. So, yeah. so um, talking of being thankful of what you have now, obviously you're a, a father of a guy. How many? How many one, kids you one, got? one, just one. one yeah. Just one. <laughs> just just one. Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one is enough. Yeah. Um, now, again, another thing that's quite big at the moment: uh, Scott Westgarth, mm. uh, young father, much like yourself, boxer. Mm. How does that make you feel as as a guy in, in much the same situation? Um, I realise this mm. could be a bit of a silly question given that you've come from one dangerous profession into another. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's deep, it's a very it's a touchy subject, man. It was really a cold day for boxing. Um, you know, you realise it is a dangerous sport. You realise this life is short. You realise get in and get out. It made me realise because there's times, you know, I've, I've li I like to war uh, and I realise there's so much warring you can do before it can catch up on you in that ring. Um, uh, there was the main thing of boxing, I was thinking, you know, get in and get out. That's that's what hit me, you get in and get out. Because, you know, it's, it's a, a very dangerous sport. And... Um, Would you do anything else at the moment? What, like, and just drop boxing? Yeah. Oh, that's very hard, man. I've, I've tried to drop boxing many times and it just it hasn't lived with me. So, it's, you know, boxing is a part of me. Boxing has opened the doors. Boxing, as I said, is why I'm sitting here talking. And boxing is why people are inspired by me. So, boxing has done this, this work and its wonders and doing this job uh, in my life. And um, on that note, um, I think uh, we should, you know, really highlight a lot on how boxing has saved people because I know there's many lives that have been saved through boxing though boxing has taken boxing has saved many lives um, where would where would Floyd Mayweather be if he went for boxing I was listening to his biography there they grew up in a, a one room you know dad selling drugs mum on drugs where would he have been you know what I mean we wouldn't yeah yeah he, no, he, he wouldn't be an icon very valid point he wouldn't be an icon that he's one of my top boxers that I look up to so, you know, where would it be? Where would uh, Muhammad Ali have been? But boxing gave him that, that, that he was the people's champion, that gave him that voice that lives on to today. You know what I mean? It's not to, to overshadow what's happened, but it's also to give a light also on um, the power of boxing as well. What it, um, that it can save lives also and generations. Sticking in the boxing ring, I mean, that's a that's a perfect answer, to be honest. Um, in the boxing ring, so far you're four zero and one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've had five fights unbeaten. Yeah. Uh, now you told me that you're dreaming. The dream, mm. the dream is to go all the way. Yeah. So what's your next step? You're gonna six rounder and then go uh, for a title. Yeah. Or? Next next round is I'm taking it uh, bit by bit by keeping my eye on the division itself. Um, and you settle that. Yeah, 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 and uh, middleweight now. Or? Yeah, I'm I'm at middleweight, but you know what I mean. I'm 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 hungry, so I can put my I can put my body through the pain to get to um, the weight I desire to that I feel is beneficial for me. And um, like I said, you know, it's, it's going to be fight by fight. I'm focused on each fight, and then making my decision. But um, I will be gunning for uh, some area soon. You're in a you're in good company at your gym at Miguel's. Um, yeah, now yeah. I know that uh, you're good friends with Isaac Chamberlain. Yeah, who obviously yeah, yeah, came yeah. up short against yeah, uh, yeah. <coughs> against Lawrence Acoli at the O2 recently. Now you were backstage and yeah, yeah, in the changing yeah, rooms. Yeah. How did it feel being there for that? Um, oh. Seeing it up close, it was it was amazing, man. Um, from from the beginning, you know, like. With Isaac, I've even when I was in prison. Isaac was the first one I saw on the TV. Um, it was at Bruno's gym. Bruno, Bruno, no, 
Frank Bruno Academy punching a bag and I went and said, oh, that's how is that from when was at the Lynn? And it was weird even when I said to him to this day and then coming to the gym, seeing him, I've watched him grow and even the advice he gives me and he's saying, you know, everything is from what he does in the ring. Look at it and, and the stuff he was getting and you when know, I was just watching the camera crew come to the gym non-stop and where I've just watched him grow, grow and I'm like, then to ring walk with, walk with him, you know, we're backstage and, you know, we're talking and I look up, I see myself on the screen and him on the screen and I'm like, oh Lord. And then I'm looking, I said, Isaac, you've done this, you guys done this. Who would this crowd come to see you? I, I couldn't that was a very pro-Isaac crowd as well. That, I don't know if you could hear it from the ring walk, but it was, it, it was like 90% Isaac Chamberlain fans in there. It was like something I couldn't imagine even just ring walking him and I think that helped my nervous go as well just to see that and walk with him alongside and um, him wanting me close to him and it was just amazing even watching him training up to that um, there was even times I was like damn I said guys you're training too I've never seen someone in my life train as hard as that, that guy did um, maybe even overdid it a bit but um that was the main thing. I saw. It. Obviously, he didn't. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't the Isaac. I saw. It wasn't. Uh, I've seen the Isaac. You know, pound heavyweights and you know go to war with Usyk. So um, we came short. But um, on on the other, the positive note was just the feeling, the atmosphere. Everything was just inspiring for me. I think I. I it's fair to say Isaac's yeah. going to have more more evenings like that. Um, yeah, yeah. That yeah. wasn't. As you say, that wasn't the eyes of Chamberlain we've seen no, before. No. That wasn't the guy that popped his shoulder back in and it clung wasn't. on to beat Wadi no. Camacho, you know. Definitely. I have, I have a lot of deep talks about it, so I, I knew, when I know him and I watch it, I know that guy, I looked and I said, no, nah, that's not him. So it's just you know, the bad day at the office and it's it's life. I've, I've had bad days at the office in, in terms of life itself and look at me now. Mm. So, um, yeah. So not to finish on a downer. Yeah. That is the that is the dream though, surely. That yeah. is what that is selling out the O2 and wow. Yeah, it, it's just it's just nothing to something. It's almost just like just uh, right now. It's it's the thing that's on my shoulders more or less. It's just like you know the the strength. I I went in my estate the other day. New cross had to pass by. Um, Sometimes I go down the double jab and talk to the young kids and just, just help them maybe spar with them just get that feeling. And it was weird, the amount of old people that have watched me grow and they're like, John, I heard you box now. And they're like, and it, it gave me that oomph, like, yeah, because I'm from an area, there's nothing good comes, you know, like, I, I could walk past bits and I can remember, oh, this person died here, oh, this one got shot in the head here. I remember that friend, uh, I'm walking, I saw a guy, his son's big now, and I remember when his dad died that night, you know, and, and I'm trying to advise him, and I can see him almost going down that same road. You know what I mean? And I'm saying, I tell him, bro, you, you know, you're walking in the same estate where you grew. We used to defend here and the same bits. And I'm trying to advise, you know, giving them the advice, but they listen to me more now. You know, they take in and and it feels like it's just that hope now because they're the closest thing to me. There's something of theirs. It's possible. Mm. And that's all the message that uh, to even wrap this up, I just want them to know it's possible. You know, go and do it, and I am gonna do it. And um, yeah, the big dream is to just be at O2, be at a world stage, and get the hand raised. Um, yeah. Well, looking forward to uh, being part of that journey and seeing it yes, come to fruition. Yeah, Next yeah. step is on April fourteenth. Yes, yes, April fourteenth, and uh, another another step up, six rounds. Uh, just gonna uh, demonstrate. Um, people don't realise the importance of a six rounds interject, but people don't realise the importance of a six round because once you fought one, you can fight for titles. Yes, yes, that that is a very important of it. Um, I really need a six round. I want the six round experience. Um, uh, I want to see how people see me when I get stronger along in the rounds. Um, still not fully demonstrating uh, what I, you know, uh, inspiring, uh, a lot of talk about me inspiring, uh, the way I bully people inspiring on my technical side, but 
slowly it's coming out and I can't wait for people to stay tuned and demonstrate the reason why uh, people talk a lot about my sparring so yeah April 14th April 14th make sure you get those tickets um, hit me up on ibox uh, ticket .com and yeah follow me on insta for superstar John very frank, honest, brilliant interview. Thank you for giving Thank me your time you, and your uh, candor. You've always given me beautiful interviews anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Cheers.